Welcome to the Catholic Revert Podcast with your host, the Catholic Revert, Jonathan Bernos. Revert Podcast. My name's Jonathan Bernos. I am the Catholic Revert. Well, I call myself the Catholic Revert. Hey, I've got some celebrating to do tonight. This is a special podcast. I haven't been on in a while, and uh, I've been waiting for Easter Vigil. It was huge. And uh, I am happy to say, for all those verts that are tuning in, uh, for the followers that we have for the podcast, I am officially a Roman Catholic. I've been confirmed into the Roman Catholic Church. Um, It's a big deal for me. I don't know. I'm celebrating tonight. I'm having uh, myself a Jungling. Jungling? Is it Jungling? Jungling. I'm a Jungling, which is fairly new to the area, actually. It's an East Coast beer. And uh, I am having a Jungling tonight. Just came to the Midwest, came to Kansas City. So I'm having an Amber Ale. It's one of their uh, one of their traditional or one of their old oldest ales before they had a Pilsner. Uh, and I have it. I'm having it in a Boulevard Brewing Company glass. So uh, that's my that's my brew tonight. Just having a, a slow slow pour to celebrate my confirmation. So I'm excited you guys are joining me tonight. I have no topic. I have no objective. I just want to talk a little bit about my experience with confirmation. I'm talking about my experience with RCIA. I want to talk about uh, my confirmation saint. And I want to talk about uh, some objectives, uh, some things I'm working on at the Catholic Rebirth Podcast, uh, some partnerships that we're, that we're working on with um, other Catholic content creators out there. So I want to talk about that tonight, things that are happening. I want to promote them. I'm going to put them into the comments, uh, but uh, no, I'm glad you guys are here. If you're checking us out, if you're uh, kind of a first-time listener, if you stumbled upon us through a uh, search engine, uh, if you were just out there perusing Catholic content, uh, if you've stumbled in from social media, from Facebook, from uh, Medium, uh, I write a lot on Medium. I have a blog post that's independent on a website, uh, thefinalsummit.com slash journey is where you'll find my blog spot. But actually, I, I probably put more traffic into the Medium, uh, medium.com. Uh, there's a ton of great writers on Medium, and uh, we're all just out there struggling for, for readers. So uh, it is a paid site, and over time, you pay for the content. Most of my content is free. I don't uh, I don't put it on underneath the meter to, to pay for the membership. Uh, I just would rather people read. I write secular and non-secular content, I'm really objective of the Catholic Reverb podcast is to just, uh, I, I really, I, now especially after confirmation, I was kind of, uh, after Easter Vigil, I, this huge sigh of relief, I felt at peace. Um, it's something that I've been thinking about for, for two years now, and it's done now. And so I was kind of uh, in prayer and just in thought, peaceful thought on, like, what do I do next? Like, what happens next? And I had these ideas about the podcast, and that's going to continue um, I've been writing a lot, and, and most of my writing has been uh, Catholic writing. Man, I've been doing a lot of liturgical writing. I, I read Liturgy of the Day. I follow that al- uh, along in my uh, Magnificat. And I love, to, uh, I love to read other studies. I love to read other people, the reflections on the liturgy. So I've also been kind of expanding that. But I really, in kind of in prayer and after Confirmation... Um, I really do feel called in, and I'm moving in a direction that I think uh, I feel passionate about mission work to other uh, middle-aged people, kind of in the same ballpark that I'm in where, you know, I'm, I'm single, um, I have kids, I'm, I'm divorced, I have uh, just completed an annulment before I was confirmed into the church, and I really just have a heart for those people. Um, I know through testimony the places that I that my head was in during that time. Uh, my testimony is it can be a lonely time. And if I hadn't, uh, if I haven't cling to my faith, if I hadn't have grown my faith through prayer and relationship with, with God, then I don't know if I would be in this safe place that I'm in now. So everything that I'm interested in, my passions, uh, I love writing, but, but all of my attention has been brought to Catholicism and the history of the church and what does this all mean? So I thought about talking about truth tonight. Uh, I, I want to talk about the truth, truth that I've found, not my personal truth, 
I've learned, especially in this day and age, that so many people have their own personal truth and they're looking for more truth that fits their subjective and personal truth. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the truth. And I'm always searching for the truth. My confirmation saint uh, is Saint Irenaeus. Super excited about that. I've talked about it on previous podcasts, but Saint Irenaeus, uh, he is the Gnostic hammer. Uh, He wrote and spoke out against Gnosticism um, at one of its peaks early in the church. And I know now, like uh, a lot, like on some of the some of my social writings where I talk about, you know, there's so many people out there in the world that are that feel like they've been in a relationship or have been married to a narcissist. And so the buzzword now in narcissist is like everywhere. If you look at relationship writing, if you look at experiences, people talking about relationships they've been in, divorce. They talk about, you know, they were married to a narcissist, and they were sure that they were married to a sociopath or a narcissist or psychopath, whatever you want to call it. Uh, different terms, different different definitions, but I find that everything kind of got lumped into to narcissism. And they're very much, it, it, we're living in a day and age where narcissism is probably prevalent and more common than ever before because we're just living in a selfish society. So I can definitely see it. I, I don't think people misdiagnose it, but I think it's quick to use the term narcissist for so many other could be uh, issues in sociology. And I think it's the same way in the church. What I'm learning is, you know, I, early on, I, I could lump a lot of things that weren't Christian into a Gnostic uh, bucket. But I'm finding now the Gnostic term, the, the term Gnostic, which can mean knowledge, um, it can be used incorrectly or uh, freely, I guess. What It can be used... Uh, loosely and probably out of context uh, for for so many things that maybe they are it is a Christian term or it's something that is is within Christianity but some people will jump on the Gnostic bandwagon quickly and point at something and say well that's Gnostic um, that's not based in Christianity that's based in some secret knowledge that you have that other people have to learn or do something to attain that knowledge and some people in the Protestant world would also accuse Catholics of Gnosticism of of having some kind of secret that you can't get unless you apply works to it and then you get it. Uh, they say that's salvation. So there's all kinds of misnomers. There's all kinds of misconceptions out there in in both sides. Uh, so I, I I'm impassioned about Gnosticism. Uh, I feel called from uh, my Saint uh, Saint Irenaeus. So I'm asking tonight, uh, Saint Irenaeus, pray for me as I formulate these thoughts. But That's when my writing's going to continue. I'm going to really focus on Gnosticism, um, especially in and around uh, Christianity and different churches and how Gnosticism has really become uh, more prevalent and and is growing today, just as it was in the early church. And some of the early church fathers had to uh, stand up against Gnosticism, call it out, speak out against it, write. And that's really what I like to do. I like to learn more about it, and I like to write about it. So reading more things. I'll talk about that stuff in future podcasts, things I'm reading, things I'm watching. Uh, But really tonight, what I really wanted to say was, you know, my heart is also the other area that I want to work in uh, that I feel called to as far as missions uh, and ministry is in those people that are hurting and are broken from from divorce or or in a marriage that is uh, suffering, uh, a marriage that's in a bad place. Uh, that may not survive, and or if you're outside of marriage and maybe you're in the church or outside the Roman Catholic Church, it can be uncomfortable coming into the Roman Catholic Church, which is what I did. I came off of a divorce uh, for almost uh, a 10-year marriage. Um, there was a time period where I made decisions and uh, I dated. Um, I was with someone uh, in a relationship for, for almost two years, a very good relationship, um, and it just kind of ended. And uh, I'm not upset by that. I, I see the good that came from it. It was, a, it was a catalyst for the Roman Catholic Church. I didn't become Catholic for the relationship. Uh, it was a factor. Um, it would have benefited, I, I feel, the relationship, but it, it didn't pan out that way. So, uh, But I, I wasn't going to turn away from, because the relationship ended before Easter, I wasn't going to turn away from my resolve of being Catholic because there were other reasons I wanted to be Catholic, much, much deeper and important reasons um, in addition to the reasons I had before. So I feel, I feel called to those, those people that are out there. 
it's a lonely place, man. It really is. It's a lonely place to be single and especially a single parent and to really be weighing your faith and trying to figure out where you fit in, trying to find the truth. And you can be in uncomfortable situations. And fortunately, I'm not, I'm one of those people that can come into a situation where I don't know anyone and I'll be fine. I really will. I, I can talk. Uh, I can socialize. I can network. Uh, I'm an introverted extrovert. I think some people call that an ambivert. And uh, that means that I need my recharge time. I would many times prefer to be alone, but I also know that I need to be intentional about being social and about being around people because I do enjoy that. And I think there's a good purpose, good things that come from that. So, but I have to really be intentional about getting in front of people and doing that. So, but anyways, you know, we just had Easter vigil and it was long, but I got to see my, my son, my youngest son, who's nine. Uh, I got to see him uh, baptized. Fantastic, man. I can't tell you um, how important and what that means to me, uh, my heart, uh, how important that was to see that moment and witnessing his baptism. And then right after I got to witness him taking his first communion. So I got to see him receive the Eucharist, which was even bigger than baptism for me. For him, he was all about being baptized. The Eucharist, you know, he had an opinion it was cool, but he was he was definitely more uh, looking forward to uh, get getting the water poured on his head. So, got some great video of that. Uh, got some great pictures. Um, what a, what a wonderful, powerful, meaningful mass it was. I had my family there. That they will never know how important that was for them to be there. Uh, most of my family are not Catholic, so they were <laughs> they attended a mass, uh, the longest mass of the year. And, uh, you know, I don't know what comes of that. The Holy Spirit does amazing things. Um, so who, who knows what direction some of them go in. I, I know that they were affected in some way, even if they what they projected was negative. Um, I, it's not for me to decide. Uh, the door has been open. I, I throw seed to the ground, and um, the Holy Spirit does the rest. So that's all I'll say about that part of the experience, but the rest of it was amazing. The RCIA experience was amazing. I wish that everyone in the Catholic Church would would go through RCIA. The Rite of Christians initiation really should be for everyone who's Catholic because there's so many fallen away or just um, not active Catholics within the Church, and I believe they want to be. They just don't know how, or they just feel like it's not for them. And, and I can't tell you how over the moon and excited and on fire I am pre-confirmation. Uh, but watch out, because now that I'm confirmed, there are no barriers for me. So I'm moving forward full steam. we got all kinds of projects in motion, um, and, and I'll go ahead and announce them tonight. But uh, RCIA, man, I couldn't have done it without RCIA, the group that was there, the sponsors, um, they're family now, and what what an amazing experience! Absolutely was. I can't I can't recommend it enough. If you're Catholic, uh, you should just attend an RCIA class. Do the whole program. I mean, you can't not benefit from RCIA. If you're not a Catholic, <laughs> I think you should be an RCIA. Sorry, you'll be Catholic after. Uh, yeah, it's a classroom setting. Uh, are there long nights? Absolutely. Is there a lot of information? Absolutely, but. I don't know, right up the alley for me, right up the alley. Maybe St. Irenaeus, uh, again, pray for me, uh, but uh, it was awesome. Oh, so I got this from my RCIA group. I'm tired. Easter was it's a long week. I'm ra- I'm really dragging, um, but I am so exciting. Excited. Exciting. I'm so exciting. I'm so exciting, and I just can't hide it. And I know, I know, I know, I know. I got my first crucifix. This is my first official crucifix given to me by my RCIA class and by my parish. That is so cool. Uh, I am I am super excited to put this up because I've never had one. I've got my blessed mother, blessed uh, our blessed mother Mary on my desk. I've got holy cards that are blessed. I've got uh, stuff all over the place. You'll start to see it end up behind me. Um, I've got, uh, I got my, all my rosaries, my new rosaries blessed tonight. Uh, I got my crucifix around my neck and the blessed face of Jesus here on my crucifix also blessed tonight. Uh, it's fantastic. And I'm just on cloud nine here. Uh, so yeah, yeah, man. Uh, all the saints pray for me, uh, especially my saint, my patron saint, confirmation saint, Saint Irenaeus pray for me tonight. All right. So 
yeah, it's going to be great. I'm so excited. And uh, I've got more experiences to share about RCIA. I've got more experiences to share along the way. I've got so much testimony. I've got so many things that have happened. I will say this. I had a vision. I haven't said this yet to anyone at all. In fact, I didn't even have clarification until it had happened at the end. It's one of those things when you see something, sometimes you get an answer, but you don't know it's an answer because the question hasn't even formed yet. And then once the question has formed or once the introduction to the the truth or the answer that you had forms, then you see it and you understand what it was. About two years ago, I had a vision of my son's baptism. Uh, rest in, it's what I've wanted more than anything for the last two years. My primary objective has been to work to to work towards getting him baptized. That's been more important than anything. My main focus, everything revolved around that. Uh, not everyone knew that. Most people didn't. But in my mind, in my heart, what I prayed for all the time was that I was moving to that moment. Well, that was all kicked off by uh, a vision in prayer, uh, praying over that moment, knowing that that's what I had to do. My role as a father, one of the purposes of, of me being here is to make sure that that boy was baptized. I just felt that in my heart through prayer. I just felt that being called out to me that I needed to get him baptized. That was my job, and I'm happy to say mission accomplished. But I will say, after I got in baptism, I didn't understand what I saw when I saw it two years ago. I knew that he was going to be baptized. I saw that in prayer. I didn't know, I knew that it wasn't a Protestant church, which is the weirdest thing. I debated that for a while. The easier route would have been to have my kids baptized in a Protestant church because all we had to do was, you know, really just declare our faith. And then we could have organized a baptism. And that would have been a valid baptism. But I, two years ago, had a vision, and it wasn't in a Protestant church. All I recognized it to be in was in a Catholic church, because the way that he was baptized was how he was baptized on Easter Vigil. It was the sprinkle. It was the pouring of the water over the head. Uh, That's what I saw. I didn't see submersion. I didn't see the baptism that he would have received had he been in a Protestant church. I I didn't see that. Um, and what I saw, I didn't know until after or until it was occurring. <clears throat> in fact, the day after is probably when it hit me uh, that uh, that what I saw had happened, and then that what I was what I what I was supposed to do. So, uh, what an amazing experience! And I've had other I've had other answers in prayer like that that have been just as powerful and just as meaningful, but that was, what a moment. Um, But at the end of it, it was also like, what do you do now, right? Like, what are your next steps? Now you're Catholic. Everything, you know, what you've wanted for the last two years, it's done. So now what? So I spent the next day, two days, kind of in prayer, just saying, hey, you know, God, what do you want me to do? Uh, And almost immediately, uh, opportunities popped up. Like the day after, this opportunity popped up. And I'm working closely now with uh, Michael Snellen, who I'm going to plug in the uh, comment section down here below my podcast, has a podcast, Catholicism for the Modern World. Uh, he's also, he is the creator of the blog space, Catholicism for the Modern World, which is on Medium, medium.com. It's the biggest, uh, the biggest Catholic writer's location uh, on Medium, right? So if you're looking for Catholic content on this uh, writing uh, place, this blog spot, this website, uh, if you're looking for Catholic stuff, man, he's the place to go to. He has the biggest blog. He has the most writers. And Michael reached out to me and said, hey, I'm looking for somebody to help out with the with the Medium spot. I need an editor. I need somebody to help organize content, bring in new writers and all of that. And I was like, that's me. Like, thank you. I'm humbled that you asked me. But man, talk about answering prayers <clears throat> immediately. And I just knew that's what I was supposed to do. Now, this isn't even a nonprofit yet. I think Michael's moving in that direction. I definitely think he should. I think he has a calling for this. Kid's skilled, man. He's young. He's on fire. Uh, he's smart. <clears throat> and he is going to churn out some content that's going to that's gonna change some lives. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be meaningful. It's going to have uh, good stuff in it. And he's smart, man. Uh, I categorize most of the Catholics that I network with. <clears throat> I categorize. I got something in my throat. I would classify them as scholars. I would. There's so many of them. There's writers. There's authors. And they're just smart guys. And sometimes I get in the room with them, even with Michael on a podcast. And he's like, you know, he's 20s, early 20s. And it's like I'm a little intimidated because I know these guys are smarter than me. 
Uh, and I'm not saying that. I'm not trying to downplay myself. I think I'm intelligent. Uh, they're just smarter than me. But my niche is different. My niche is that I really feel called to the lady uh, of like the the good old boy, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, street preacher kind of a uh, calling or e- evangelical mission uh, is that I'm just going to, I go off feel. I'm going to go off testimony. I may not be able to scholarly pull up books or to quote scripture exactly, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to paraphrase. I'm going to add some feeling to it. Uh, and you're going to get emotion with me. You are. You're going to get... Uh, you're going to get testimony that that is real, that means something to me, and I, I believe means something to you because you're going to relate to me. Uh, I have those kind of stories. <clears throat> That's how I was as a stand-up comedian. That's the kind of jokes I told were storytelling. You can relate with this kind of stories. So that... That's my mission. That's my focus. And I've got some big projects I'm working on. So I want to announce these projects. Uh, they they align with Catholicism for the modern world. Uh, in addition to kind of being a writer and an editor to uh, that Catholicism for the modern world, Michael is starting up uh, kind of the hub spot for all of the content that comes out of Catholicism for the modern world, which is going to include uh, Catholics, uh, Catholic content for kids, Catholic content for teenagers, Catholicism, uh, and content for area parishes. Um, he has a Discord where there are hundreds of uh, Catholics on this Discord that network with each other. It's fantastic, and he uses that to kind of as a pulpit or a place to launch this content that he creates, well, along with so many other Catholics. So there's a lot that are involved here, and again, I think he's moving into a nonprofit status at some point. That's going to be fantastic. Um, I would love to use Catholicism for the modern world uh, in addition to promoting that out into my local parish, but also other parishes that I intend to visit. Uh, I would love to use uh, Catholicism for a modern world um, to help kind of springboard me into some of the things I feel called to do, which will be, and this is the this is exciting for me. I've talked to uh, the, both of my uh, archdiocese here in Kansas City. Um, and I have uh, approval for the most part, not that I needed it, but I'm going into individual parishes and I'm, I'm creating a coffee table kind of picture book uh, that will have uh, four Catholics of Kansas City that will have pictures and kind of uh, storytelling uh, visuals for all of the different churches in the, the parishes in the area. And I want to continue to expand that. Now, is there a need for that? I don't know. This is a more of a passion project. Uh, it's an it's a excitement for me to go visit these churches because I love the history and the architecture of it. And I want to share that, but I know being Catholic now and also relationships with other Catholic families that, you know, every Catholic in the area has been to different parishes at one time or another for either a funeral or a uh, baptism or a wedding or a wedding. I better edit that out. I gotta, (laughs) it's my allergies. Hold up. Okay. That was gross. I gotta edit that. Anyways, I know they've been to different parishes, and so there's meaning there. And I think uh, just a coffee table book of your grandma comes over and she's flipping through the pages. I think it'd be kind of neat. But I'm really doing it for more of my own personal project. Here are the other projects that are kind of more mission related, ministry related. Uh, I do feel called. I am writing a book uh, about being single and over forty um, and being Catholic. One of the things I never considered because Catholicism wasn't an option. But when it did, I still didn't consider it that if at any point I was going to be single again, completely single as a single dad with kids and being a Catholic and to be to be in the Catholic Church and to be a faithful Catholic, my world was going to change. How I date has now changed. Um <laughs> It's, uh, it's very difficult. Let's just say that I really have limited my pool to date from. And I'm a different person than I was before. So I'm just going to state that it's it's very different for me. And everything that I've learned along the way and that I will continue to learn and that I know that I'm going to continue to practice, I want to write that. And I want to share that. And not just write it into a book, but the purpose of the book is basically to go in and speak. I'd love to go into parishes in my area and beyond to be a guest speaker, to conduct um, uh, different courses, uh, different support groups, 
and to kind of give my testimony and talk to others that are just like me, that are in my position, men and women that are both struggling in marriage or are divorced. And I want to talk about the annulment process because it's, 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 a, it's a complex process. Um, and in that process, it's very isolating. It's very alone. And it's a perfect time for the enemy to kind of creep in and to try to disrupt things. And it definitely happened to me, and I want to talk about that. And if that can be helpful to anyone out there, um, I definitely want to do that. The other thing I want to work on is, and continue to work on, is uh, just kind of my testimony. It's the, it's a larger book, uh, a larger writing piece of the Catholic revert, and it's my journey into the Catholic or back to the Roman Catholic Church. I want to tell that story, too, because I think there's, uh, I think that can also help. And I, I do love public speaking. That's my end goal is to get back in front of people, to speak, to network. Um, I still write comedy in my head, and uh, I just started reading and, and she is the female version of me. She is, we have this, such similar personalities and such similar stories. Uh, Jennifer Fulweiler, who our Archbishop uh, Nauman in our area, uh, he has read her book and he promotes her all the time, talks about her. She is a stand-up comedian, entertainer. She's a writer. Uh, she's authored a number of books now, but her first book is um, – really about her journey from atheism into the Roman Catholic Church. Such a polar opposite <laughs> starting point to end point. And there's a lot of struggle along the way. And suffering is guaranteed, but I love her stories. And I love, I love her comedy. I love, I love her, how she speaks to people. Uh, and I'm the same way. I, 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 I loved, I'm still an entertainer at heart. I still love to speak to people. I love to people, make people laugh. Um, I like to be relatable in that way. And I want to bring that as part of my personality into what I speak about, what I write about. And that is going to be uh, my ministry. That's going to be my mission work. And I want to bring this into Catholic churches. Uh, it's very, it is going to be niche. I don't know what comes of it. Uh, I would love to be able to support myself by doing this. Uh, I, I have a full-time job, and this is going to be a lot of work on top of that. So, But I just feel really called to focus on it right now. Um, I've tried to step into other things, and, and everything keeps putting me back here. Everything keeps, uh, God keeps putting me back onto this, and so I'm 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 surrendering. It's what I pray for all the time, is to surrender, and I get it. I'm going to. I am in the process of surrendering because I know that this is what I'm supposed to do. So, those are some exciting projects that I'm working on. Some big things that are happening and coming. Uh, again, Catholicism for the modern world. Check it out. Check out their medium space. Uh, my articles now. What I write about. Uh, the Catholic Church is going to go to that space now instead of on my own. Uh, and then I still do write uh, non-secular things uh, more around social uh, awkwardness with people and my own stories. So that stuff happens as well. But keep an eye out for the projects. Um, I am going to continue to move forward with writing these books. If I can speak before the book's complete, I'm going to do that. Uh, I would like to start with my local parish. Uh, I'm going to work on some some groups here and, and really promoting myself and and then I'm going to kind of spread out in the Kansas City area but if you're interested in what I'm working on ideas uh, if you'd love to be a part of this you'd love to network with some ideas please let me know reach out to me um, the Catholic revert you can do it through the YouTube channel you can also email me at your final summit uh, at gmail.com and that's a way to get a hold of me uh, my LLC my small company is the final summit it's a content creation company. Um, again, my, a lot of my focus right now is uh, in um, uh, kind of the religious world, uh, into churches. It doesn't have to be a Catholic church. Uh, I, I'm working with Christians. Um, if that's coaching, if that's tutoring, whatever you want to call it, it is really more coaching and content creation. That's what I do um, and it's what I'm passionate about. But I'm going to start to merge everything together. And again, if I can continue to grow this, uh, if I can continue to grow speaking engagements, if I can get out in front of people and I can kind of spread this ministry, uh, this is what I'm called to do. Uh, this is where my heart is. So pray for me. Uh, I'd ask the, anyone listening, uh, any verts out there listening to the podcast that are following, any new listeners, continue to promote this. Please share. Uh, get on the email list. I'm going to start sending out a monthly newsletter with this coaching, with some of this support in it. And if you're in a place that's just a rough place in your life, Relationship-wise, if you're a single parent, if you've been through a divorce, if you're going through an annulment, um, uh, I'm going to have a monthly newsletter, and I'm going to have uh, really just support for you. I'm going to speak uh, life over you. I'm going to pray over you. I'm going to get you on that list. Uh, there's going to be other things offered through this, but I want to start there. So let me know if you're out there and get in touch with me. Again, um, I'm going to
going to continue to grow from here uh, into those areas. So check us out. Again, the Catholic Revert. Check out our podcast. Subscribe to it. Get on our mailing list. Um, get in touch with us. Leave a comment. Um, I do response videos. I do comment back. I love comments. Um, I also continue to write. Check out the Medium posts, uh, Catholic uh, Catholicism for the Modern World. Leave comments on the articles. Um, I will, will respond back. So, man, connection, talking, that's what we're all about. So, anyways, uh, I'm going to pray real quick, and then uh, I'm going to get out of here early tonight. Just wanted to do a quick, real quick podcast, give everyone the update. So, don't forget, don't forget, edit out the uh, the the sniffles. So. Uh, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, we just I thank you for this time tonight, and uh, man, I'm so overwhelmed and, and joyous for and, and give you glory and praise for confirmation and for the Easter vigil and for the baptism of my son, and for the Eucharist for him receiving his first communion and for my confirmation, Lord. But um, I pray that more people would see your glory, would find. Um, your son would find you, Jesus, to find you and know you um, through their church, through uh, being a Christian, a follower of you. Um, lead us all to your glory. Lead us all to salvation and redemption. And we are so thankful for this Easter season. What an amazing season it is. And for anyone that's out there watching, Lord, I just pray over them. Um, I pray peace over them. I pray that they know that someone uh, is with them. They're not alone. The Holy Spirit walks with them. So, um Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for this time. Um, we continue to pray in your Son's name, in Jesus' name. Uh, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, that's what I got for tonight there, uh, Revert. So thanks for tuning in, checking us out. Um, again, like and share, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, join the email list. I'm going to really pump up those numbers so I can start getting more communication out. But uh, hope you guys can support me and support me on my journey. And thanks for checking us out, man. Uh, prayers and blessings over you guys for the rest of the week.